Hello, I'm Grady King with Hope Network Ministries, and I'm delighted today to have two special people, special guests with me, and that is Amanda Box and Becky Burrows. And today we're going to be talking about leadership boot camp for women in ministry. And I'm excited to have you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, starting with Amanda. Let's go sure. from there. Sure. Well, after many years as a college professor in the communication department, I landed on staff at Meadowbrook Church of Christ as children's minister and then moved into the connections minister role. So I was on staff for 11 years. I've just had a recent move to Texas. So now I'm just a communication coach full time, but I'm happy to be here today. Ah, it's good to have you, man. It's looking forward to what you have to say. And then there, then there's Becky. Yes, I'm Becky Burroughs, and I spent about 25 years in education, most recently as a high school principal for a Christian school, and then I came to work at Highland Oaks Church of Christ. I, I have had several roles here in the last 15 years, administration minister, children's minister, executive minister, and now outreach minister, and I felt a very strong calling to coach women in ministry. I've had 40 years experience in leadership in nonprofit and now in ministry. And I love pouring into younger women and wow, there's just getting to be more and more younger women as I get older. So uh, <laughs> it's a very important work. Um, and that, that led me to a partnership with Amanda. I was talking with um, John Mulliken, who was with Hope Network about, you know, I see, I see men with opportunities to coach men in ministry, but who is coaching the women? And right. there are very few. And so I decided that's something that I wanted to do. So I've been doing one-on-one -on -one and group coaching, but then Amanda and I partnered up because my thing is leadership. Her thing is communication. And we partnered up and created this curriculum for leadership boot camp for women in ministry. Wow. Yeah. That's a go ahead, Amanda. That's well, right. I was just going to add on to that, like as we were talking to women, our colleagues through Facebook or online groups, it was just so clear that these women had so much to offer and they are so frustrated. <laughs> and, so, yeah, <laughs> and Becky and I, we have a few years of experience between us. We cut our teeth professionally in the corporate world in the world of education, in a, uh, we cut our teeth in a world that wasn't on a church staff. And so we had long since navigated all of these tricky issues with credibility mm -hmm. and communication and Becky with leadership. And so we, we just saw the need. They don't know what to do in these situations, although they were very, very well trained, knew what to do with their ministries. They didn't know how to navigate the other part very well. Wow. You know, I've said for years as a preaching minister, formerly a youth minister way back when, that the loneliest people in church are young mothers and wives of church leaders, particularly ministers. I think elders' wives feel that too. And then I've thought, oh gosh, with you add the women in ministry component and it's just exponentially changes the dynamic and the need so go ahead it really it really does I, I didn't sorry to interrupt um you know as as amanda said these women are highly trained to do the jobs they're doing but what they were unprepared for is that feeling of isolation mm. very, very common for a woman to in ministry to be the only female minister on staff and she's very often the children's minister but not always um and that creates feelings of isolation um, where, I mean, women need women. Uh, we just do. And we know how to work with men. We enjoy working with men, but we need women in our life and we need someone to talk to and someone to bounce ideas off of that, that understands our world. These women right. also talk about not having a voice or not feeling like their voice is being heard. And so we address those issues and how to own own your, your role uh, in a better, more confident way. They also um, don't necessarily understand their value. And that comes from the way a lot of churches approach hiring women, uh, paying them less than they pay the men, giving mm -hmm. them more titles than the men have, uh, right. not giving them as much opportunity to, to um, have a voice and to be heard. And so, you know, Amanda and I decided that our curriculum needed to include 
uh, how to have credibility in the workplace, in particular, when you are a woman working in what is predominantly a man's world, how do you, how do you have project credibility? Um, how do you develop confidence? And, and if you don't have confidence, then how do you call upon your courage? Because you need one or the other. And confidence <laughs> right. tends to come from, right. confidence tends to come from, uh, if, if I am either educated or I have experience or expertise or giftedness in an area, then I have confidence. But if I don't have confidence, then I need to call on my courage. And there's a lot of fear wrapped up in courage. Ooh, but, like but the beauty of uh, courage is I believe that fear lives on the boundaries of our comfort zone. And we try to stay inside that comfort zone. The only problem is we don't grow and we don't learn there. And so when we muster up our courage and face that fear that's screaming at us at the border and we step beyond our comfort zone, then with the magic happens. That's where the growing takes place. That's where the learning takes place. But it also forces the comfort zone to broaden. Now you have a new comfort zone. You, you, can, you can think of things, Grady, that you used to be scared to do, but you're not scared to do them anymore because yep. you had courage and you kept taking that next step forward. So we try to empower women um, and to encourage them and to educate them. There's some education involved as well in our book. that's, wow, makes me, I won't say wants to be, make, makes me want to be a woman, but I, I really <laughs> love what you're saying. And I know that women really, Need this. I've been in meetings where there was only one children's minister and 14 men in a room. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's certainly the case all the time. And just to piggyback on what Becky was saying, she said everything so well. And those things are so conspicuous as the only female on staff because I'm invited to the party, but I may not be asked to dance. And so wow. how do I speak up in a credible way? And how do I handle being thrown off balance when, when it's controversial in our faith to be a female on staff? So you're constantly off balance. You're constantly on a tightrope, not only managing your ministry, but managing your credibility, managing the many conflicts or the big ones that come up. And those are the things that are draining. It's not the work. It's all these other things mm -hmm. that we're not trained very well to do unless you have some experience under your belt, which is what we have. <laughs> I'm yeah, laughing and, because it was hard earned, right, Becky? It was hard earned. That's right. And yeah. men, men say stupid things. And hey, sometimes we're, we're not going to do that. Everybody I mean, says stupid things. I mean, I know that, but I mean, in a group context, sometimes they can talk as if the woman's not even there. <laughs> Well, I have been in elders meetings where I was one woman with 20 men and they're talking about women's roles in the church as if I were not in the room. <laughs> and I'm, I'm practicing what Amanda teaches in the boot camp. I'm practicing my, my slightly interested resting face, trying not to look, <laughs> trying not to cry and, and trying not to look shocked and trying not to show that I'm, I'm perplexed as to why no one's asking me how, what I think or how I feel as they're talking about me. They don't realize they're talking about me, but they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly they are, certainly are. So you've done how many of these so far? I mean, you, this started like two years ago or three? It started one year ago, we've done one three. One year ago. Mm -hmm. We and have done three. How many is in a typical group? Um, we like to keep it 10 or less so that we can interact with them. Right, and what we, right. what we like to do is we like to do a lot of the teaching uh, via video. And that way they can watch it whenever they want, as many times as they want. And then we come together once a week for a month and we do two hours of group coaching. We also uh, encourage each woman to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one group coaching session with me. It's more of a strategy session and another one with Amanda to deal with some, some very specific things that they're facing in their ministry. Wow. Yeah. And those things are so important to keep those classes small. So we get community. We talked about isolation and I felt that in a big way. I was the only female church of Christ minister in the state of Mississippi for 11 years. Wow. There was a, there were a couple of years where that was an exception and I was lonely in that. I didn't want to go 
to my church people, to my friends who were church people, to my family. I needed a community of other, and I wanted Church of Christ ministers so that they already had me in context. And so Becky fired up this very casual online group, and I was like, me, I want to be in it. And it would not have mattered what we were doing. We were doing leadership with Becky, but it wouldn't have mattered. I needed friends. I needed friends. Mm -hmm. So it really is, it, it, it provides a real safe place for them to be and to share and to feel valued and get some coaching and leadership that's so, so it's really yeah. for women in ministry but we also have volunteers though too like i think you're in the spotlight when you're a female minister on staff but you've got a lot of work that's done by women in the church, whatever their title is. It might just be volunteer or a ministry leader, whatever they're called, but they're in the same predicament. They're just not on staff. And so they're learning how to lead in this world too. So we've had a lot of success with volunteers as well. In fact, the last boot camp we did, one church sent six women and only one of those women was employed by the church. The others were high capacity volunteers who were leading ministries as volunteers. And this church is not even a church that has dealt with women's roles in the church yet, but their preacher believes so much that that's where they need to wow, head. He's trying incredible. to empower the volunteers. It's just incredible. And what Amanda and I learned that we didn't know before is the power of having all of the women in the group from one church because they are able to take that language home and continue helping, encouraging and supporting each other long after the boot camp is over. Yeah, That's so we incredible. started with ministers, we started with ministers, broadened it to volunteers, and now we're broadening it even a little bit more because I think any church staff could go through the same boot camp because everybody needs communication and leadership skills. So to go through this together as a staff, no matter what the gender or title or, or anything is going to be a great experience for cohesion, for skills to understand each other better, to handle conflict better, then that's going to float out to the church as well. So whatever variety or whatever version, Becky and I, we can do whatever you want. <laughs> I, I, I think you could call it the Romans 16 group. And the reason I say that is because 20 of the 30 names mentioned in Romans 16 are women. Right. And I think that is incredible. I remind, I love to preach to that and go, hey, d let's get off our ho high horse here about who really makes church go. You know, <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit working through 20 of the 30 women in Romans 16 in these house churches. It's just pretty incredible thing. So this is a Romans 16 group right here. We love have it. here. I love that's, it. That's great. So what's been your experience with women? What kind of feedback are you getting? Testimonies? What kind of input what kind of loop are you getting back from communication loop back from them it's been incredible I'm I come away from those classes completely inspired I used to call myself the communication evangelist but I've I've given myself a promotion promotion now I call myself the unleasher of the awesome because when people <laughs> have the language to lead what's there comes out and it is amazing. I mean, the stories, the ways in which these women are leading, I get chills, we're applauding, and they're just putting one foot in front of the other, doing what God wants them to do with the skills to, to either get back on balance when they're thrown off. They are so on mission. I mean, we are, I feel like we've given birth to all these little leaders, you know, because they were already so awesome to begin with. And we just, give them the skills that creates a confidence of confident habits to be able to push that further. That's just one thing. Wow. We always ask for feedback. Um, first of all, because we want it, we want to continue to uh, tweak the program because it needs to meet the pain points of the women who are there. It's not about the two of us deciding what they need to know. We need to deal with what they're dealing with. Yeah, they're and reality. So, in our last session, we always ask, uh, we re-record our sessions and we ask for feedback. We also ask um, for testimonials if they're willing to send them. And we include those um, in the, the registration um, that we send out for people to uh, sign up for our next boot camp. We want them to see what other women have said about the boot camp. The feedback that we get, I really think has to do with the way in which each woman now feels empowered in a way that she didn't feel empowered when she came in, whether it's about courage to do a thing that 
that she didn't have the courage to do before or knowing how to, to feel and to present as more credible or having confidence or how to deal with conflict. We touch on all of these things. And so it's different for each woman, right? Because they're each coming to the boot camp for a different reason. That's one of the things we ask them at the beginning. Why did you sign up? What were you hoping to get from it? And then in the end, we ask them, you know, if, if it was, if it worked for them, if they got what they came to get and, and it has, it has been overwhelming. Um, the, the community, I think is an important aspect of it. Not only do we have community in our coaching groups, but we create a, a private Facebook group for the duration for the month so that we can share our successes and our cries of anguish and anything that we want to share. We put resources on that private Facebook group. It's just another touch point. Um, so that we can stay connected with these women and we stay connected with them after the boot camp is over. Yeah. Wow. This is awesome. I love it. I love it. Man, you got to come to, so how would somebody find out about it? How would they participate? What's the cost? Okay. Uh, They're all great questions. Let me just, I need to give a shout out to Hope Network because this boot camp started because uh, the leaders that be at Hope Network believed in us and believed in what we had to offer and really helped us promote it. Um, and after, um, after we've been doing this for a year, though, one of the things we've discovered is there's not a good database out there for what churches have women on staff. I've asked, you know, ACU, I've talked to Hope Network, I can't find one. And so getting the word out is extremely difficult. Uh, we, we advertise it on Facebook and Instagram. We ask Hope Network to put it on, on their stuff that goes out. But we are always looking for a better way to get the word out. And of course, word of mouth is always going to be your best marketing tool, but that takes a long time. It's hard to build up that reputation. And we've only been doing this for a year. Um, the boot camp is set up uh, for four weeks, two hours every Monday for four weeks. So our next one begins the first Monday in February. I don't have that date right in front of me. I think it's the seventh, maybe. Um, and it goes for four weeks. We also send a one hour video module um, prior to that session. And it usually has the worksheet that goes with it. Again, they can watch it as many times as they want. They can practice some of the skills on there. They can come with their questions ready for the group coaching time. It costs $450 for the whole thing. That includes four two-hour group coaching sessions, a one-on-one -on -one with me, a one-on-one -on -one with Amanda, four teaching modules, and the worksheets that go along with it. That is a special price that we only reserve for ministry because if you know anything about coaching, um, right. packages, right. they're a lot more expensive than that, but we understand we're in the ministry world. So we understand that the price has to be affordable. So if somebody's listening to this, which I hope they, they will, uh, as we push it out, this interview today, this, this session we're doing and they say, look, you know what? I want to help scholarship someone. Would they send that to who? Like if they I need... wanted to scholarship somebody, because I'm thinking not everybody in every church right. context you know, would have it. And so, so on the registration page is information on how to get a hold of Amanda or me. We'll have our email addresses okay. on there. All right. And they need to contact us and let us know uh, because that's what Hope Network did for us. They had um, a grant that they had received and they used that for coaching. And so Hope uh, right. Camp was a recipient of some of that money. And so, yes, that's what happened with this church that sent six people. There was someone willing in that church to underwrite it. And so that would be the way. Get a hold of us um, on our email. And I'm hoping as we send this out, uh, that information can also be included along with the link to how to register for boot camp. Yeah. We want to be sure people know how to get a hold of us. You just get the information to me and I'll get it to Greg and Bridge. So we'll get it out there and attach it in the Facebook post and then wherever we put it, we'll make sure they get, get all this information. So if you had to say, um, if you had to kind of summarize in a sentence, I believe in this because you would say what? I believe in leadership boot camp. Yep. I believe in leadership boot camp for women because. Now, do we each get one sentence, Grady? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm looking for a conviction statement. You've already said it, but I just want to summarize it. So anybody that's on the fence is going, oh, I need to do this, you know? Just to be with these two ladies, if nothing else. I believe in leadership boot camp because women need women. 
And God calls us to pour into older women, to pour into younger women. And yet, Absolutely. yeah, I, I just need to stop there. Oh, that's awesome. Go ahead. Well, we're dealing with such amazing, gifted, strong, amazing leaders. And my part with communication is a learned skill. And so anybody can learn it and they're going to be able to do their job so much better once they have those communication skills, confidence, credibility, the ability to handle conflict, all of those. It just makes everything easier. Wow, this is great. You know, in the churches that I consult, do interim ministry with, and I, I talk about uh, ministry and who's who's really leaning into their spirituality, their soul care, taking scripture seriously, taking their life seriously. Nine times out of 10, they say, we have a group of women here who are, are as much on fire, if not more, than many of our men in this church. And if it wasn't for some women on fire, we would be in deep trouble. So you just validated that today, the need for it. Thanks for joining me. And we'll, we'll look forward to hearing more about it in the future and, and uh, join Leadership Boot Camp for Women in Ministry. Thank, Thank you, Grady. Grady. Appreciate Blessings. your support. See you soon. Bye-bye.